Well, hello there, and I uh, hope you're listening to us here on our podcast. Hey, Paula, help me with my DIY project. Can you believe we're on episode seven Ooh, already? I know, I it know. Went so this fast. Is, but this one is a really good one. And thank you. For one of that. Paula's favorite topics. Mm-hmm. Next to lighting. <laughs> thank you for putting that list together. I'm glad you know what I like, <laughs> but you do. And uh, I hope this is going to be informative to you, those of you who are listening to us, and uh, again, who are watching us here on the podcast. We at least have some visuals for you. You may even see a cattail go by here. I saw one myself <laughs> yeah. go by. There, we're at my house. I'm sitting on her seat. She's not happy. Uh, Yes. They, uh, you know how they are. They like to perch themselves. So uh, we are talking about one thing I love, and that's rugs. I think rugs in a home without rugs is a certainly a blank canvas, and it's a great place to add interest and art to your home. And I consider a rug a piece of art and uh, rug art for the floor. So (laughs) if you've got pictures on your wall, you don't want to miss the opportunity to have a beautiful piece of art on your floor. So let's talk about qualities of rugs, sizes of rugs, and materials and help you make a great decision. There's lots of places today to buy rugs and... Add a deal. They add a real deal. Because they're not cheap. They're really not cheap, but they add a lot of impact to your home. So before we get into it, let's read a review from last week. Oh, yes, let's do that. Okay, so this one is from username Deb HG, and she says, Love Paula and Melissa. I'm learning how to use this paint, and I just love it. You ladies have such inspiring ideas and have really given me the courage to try to make some changes. This podcast is a great idea, and I'm just amazed you can squeeze this in your busy schedule. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I'm amazed, too. So yeah. <laughs> uh, we just make it happen because we think it's a great way to reach you all and uh, for those of you who have time to listen and maybe not watch. So let's get right into this mm-hmm. subject because I think it's a good one. So um, let's talk about qualities of rugs. Uh, we all know we can Google that and find them on Amazon. We can find them rugs.com. You name it, Rugs USA. They're all over the place. But Sometimes you get lost in the shuffle when you go there and you go, well, what size do I need? What texture do I need? What color do I need? I get overwhelmed and just at all the different yeah, there's designs. A, there's and so, so many. Yeah. So, so, so You can go so down many. a rabbit hole real fast. If you have a patterned sofa, do you want a patterned rug? You know, those are the simple things you ask yourself if you've got busy pillows what kind of so let's talk a little bit about that in depth so i'm going to reveal to you during this podcast my number one place to shop for high quality rugs they have low and high quality rugs but i'm going to give you a little trade secret and i think you'll enjoy it this rug behind us if you could see it it's a beautiful sisal room size rug and i bought it for a fraction of retail and the reason I got it at such a great deal was, first of all, it's on my favorite site called eBay. I know y'all <laughs> might have heard of that one. And eBay is... She uh, is the eBay queen. I love me some eBay. I've There's been doing an, eBay for years. I was surprised there wasn't an eBay box on the porch when I got here. I know it. I, I Craig must already got it. Send them incognito. <laughs> but they actually do put eBay writing on everything nowadays. I wish they didn't do on that. On the tape. I know. It gets me in trouble. But uh, <laughs> I've got rugs even in the, in the bellows of my house here that I find one I like better. So I'm going to just trade that out and buy me another one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, rugs are my thing, and I think they just are adding such warmth and texture to your house. If you have wood floors, especially, you can use rugs on carpet. If you've got bland, tan carpet and you're just sick of it, put your rug down over it. You can do that. There's great sticky pads out there. You can find those on eBay. You can find them on uh, Amazon, wherever you shop, uh, you can find a sticky rug pad. It sticks to both the rug and to the carpet. So it will hold it in place and it won't crawl. So that's the thing. You don't want a rug that will trip you. And those stick sticky pads, make sure it is a sticky pad. It doesn't leave a residue on the floor, on the carpet when you remove it. It just sticks really well and it'll hold them tight. You can even set a coffee table back on top of it and it doesn't make a dent and indentation down into the rug. And so it really works to mm-hmm. solve a problem. Yeah. If you've got a warm spot around your bed or where you've made a traffic pattern. Or you just need to add some color into a need to add neutral some, room. Yes, just trying texture. to add some, again, that pattern. That mm-hmm. pattern is so important. Even if you have a simple house, uh, it's a great way just to add textural rugs. So let's talk about that. So mm-hmm. you can jump onto these websites and find Yes, tell us deals. this great secret that you were about to tell yes, us. Yes, <laughs> you can find rug deals out there. But I'm going to encourage you to find some to go over to my site that I love. It's called Pacific underscore home. And we'll post that. We'll put that link right here into the show show notes. Yes, here on the podcast. That is their username on eBay. Mm -hmm. Pacific underscore home. Just search that and they will pop right up there. You'll see they have thousands of rugs that are listed and they are returns, meaning you have to look. You want to go on there and really look it over and understand what you're buying. You're buying what's called freight damaged or dirty back rugs, meaning they've been hauled on a truck it got dirty, it got damaged, it got burned through the plastic some way by scrubbing it on the ground. That doesn't mean it's unusable. Sometimes they've been cut, 
Sometimes somebody's opened the rug with a sharp knife and cut the back, slice the back. They send them back and they blame it on the manufacturer. They send it back. And uh, this is where you can benefit. Sometimes those can be repaired. Sometimes they don't show. It's up to you. Uh, you know, it's consumers returning a rug for some reason. They show you what's wrong with that rug. And here's the beauty. Don't just go on there and pay what they have on that site. They're probably going to ban me when they hear me keep <laughs> telling people this. I've told hundreds of thousands of people this. I'm sure that they would like to know who's told them this. You can make an offer. And do not they're not an auction on eBay. You know, there's different ways to buy on eBay. You can buy it now. You can do an auction and whatever. So this company does a little of both. They do buy it now or make an offer. And I always make them about a 50% offer. So they've already got great deals. I make them a 50% offer, let them come back and counter offer me something, and they'll always be a substantial discount, and I'll counter back with them two or three times until <laughs> I finally get the deal I want. They're always free shipping, always, so yep. the shipping is enormous. When you're buying nine feet by 12 feet rugs, they're going to be nine feet long, so just remember, when you order these massive big rugs, they are a pain to get in the door. This rug behind And that's us, why they're so pricey in general when you oh, get them at a retail store. Imagine just uh, how much it would cost you to just go to rugs.com and buy a rug. Mm -hmm. Even if it's free shipping, that's built into the price. So, And unless you have a pickup truck, you can't throw a nine-foot rug in the back of your SUV and haul if it If it's home. a good quality rug, you can't. Now, cheap olefin rugs or polypropylene rugs, those are the ones that you'll see at Home Depot and Lowe's and things like that. Those are mass-produced rugs. The great thing I love about Pacific Home, the the eBay site is you can search by content, meaning the fiber content. I always start my search with one thing. I don't work search for size. I search for a color. You just put in there basic color, red, blue, green, yellow, black, whatever it is you want, search a basic color. Don't call it uh, maroon teal. or teal, <laughs> right? Remember a very simple lister, the person listing it, put it very basic in there. And I say the content of the rug that I'm wanting, if I wanted a sisal rug, a woven rug like this rug behind me or seagrass, I put that in there, seagrass. Then I get all the seagrass rugs. Or if I want a wool rug, and that's what I buy. If you know anything about carpeting, or if you know anything about rugs, a wool rug is, generally the wool rugs will be made of staple yarns. So you'll get a little bit of shedding and, um, I won't go into all that, but good wool rugs are enormously expensive and wool carpeting is crazy expensive. But if you get a staple wool rug, meaning that's, anyway, we'll not going into all that. <laughs> that's too, too uh, long of a message. But the wool rugs that are on there are excellent. They have beautiful color and they look quality. They're heavier than a... They have a thick pile to them too, very right? They feel great style. on your feet when you walk on them. Yes, and they do all sorts of, they have all sorts of different styles. So you may, you know, they're not all Persian and Asian looking rugs. They're, you know, they're going to be every kind of genre of style. So there's just textural rugs on there. But if you like the idea of buying a wool rug, you can get a high quality rug at what you're going to pay for a olefin or a nylon polypropylene rug at a big box. So I suggest go there and look around, see what you find, and uh, just start marking them all and put them into your favorites. And that way you could go back and see them all after you built your favorites file on eBay, go look at them all, then start placing you some uh, offers on there and see what they take. So what was your best deal you got? Uh, probably this sisal rug. It is, uh, this one behind us, if you're watching, you see, it is uh, 12 by 14. So huge. it is humongous, yes. huge, huge, huge. 12 or 14 rug, this would have, it's a really heavy, thick one. It's not a thin seagrass rug. It probably weighed 150 pounds in the bundle. Wow. It didn't come rolled, it come folded up. And this thing was- What do you think um, it retails for? Probably about a grand. I paid for this rug shipped to me. They probably broke even on the shipping unless they got a heck of a deal. <laughs> I paid them 225, I think, for this rug. Wow. Yeah. I made them an offer. They had it on What was the damage it had to it? Just the nothing, stain on the nothing, back? No stain. It was just uh, probably what they would call loose threads because these rugs typically have knots and threads that stick up. Someone might have not known that and thought it was loose threads like it was raveling. So oh. um, see them when you look, you see mm -hmm. those threads yep. that stick up. That's just the nature of this rug. So somebody might not have expected that. If you buy woven seagrass rugs, they're flat. If you get this one, a real tied seagrass rug, it's going to have those knot ends that stick up because it's really handmade. Um, so back to the idea of just what patterns do you pick for rugs? 
and how do you select a rug for your room and how do you keep from going down that big rabbit hole of yes color decisions color decisions i do it by tone i look in my room and if if this rug were not here i'm going to look at my furniture and look at my walls and look at the fixed things just like i always talk to you about kitchens look at what can't change and you go all right everything in here is dark or everything in here is light well mine happened to be light so i want contrast always I want to pick the highest contrasting thing. So if I had white furniture and white coffee and end tables, whatever that might be, and dark floors, I'm going to have to figure out now, do I want a white rug or a mid-tone rug? Do I want my sofa to have a contrast to the rug or do I want it to blend in? That's the things you have to kind of think about. So once you kind of make those mental decisions, then you can say, okay, or, or maybe you, you go like your room. I want something vivid. I, have, I needed some visual interest in that room. You needed visual interest, exactly. So Melissa had a lot of solid things going on. She had a lot of dark walls, accent walls, and then she had wood floors, and that walked, her wood floors walked off to tile. She didn't have a lot of pattern, no pattern, matter of fact, no, that I can really. recall, mm -hmm. no patterns. And she had a lot of color, but no patterns. So uh, we had a beautiful rug that came in to us, a nine by 12 beautiful wool rug that was sculptured, meaning it had this beautiful kind of um, uh, organic looking pattern in it with teals and all Mediterranean or all one paint color. And even the perfect a, colors that I had going on in my home. Cobblestone, wedge wood looking colors in it. Somebody in our group posted their dining room and had that exact same wow. rug. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. That's a, I had never a seen it anywhere rug. else. Uh, so, nevertheless, we got she got that rug and put that in. And guess who's a fan of rugs now? Melissa, because she never liked rugs before. No. I've been saying, you yeah. need some rugs and lamps, I think girl. it's, I always thought it was easier to clean around them. And actually, they hide dirt better they than anything. They hide a lot of dirt. Yes, they do. Heaven help me. I'm glad they hide cat air. Um, <laughs> but yes, I mean, they catch it. But at least it's not blowing around in dust bunnies around. That's true. Under stuff yeah. If you don't have this uh, vacuum there um, where nothing can... Everything can be seen and little balls <laughs> laying under stuff. So, um, yes, and it, I'll, I'll just say go over to Pacific underscore home on eBay. Check it out. Make them an offer. And I think you will be amazed at how many rugs they have. I think the last time I looked, they had 5,000 rugs. I think the last time I got on there, I spent about two hours. Oh, well, you'll, go through, yeah. you'll go down a little rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. That's all right. It's, it's a fun, fun rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do anything at the yeah. moment. You just shop. Just look, look, look. And, and they'll be there when you come back. Yeah. They'll have more than one occasionally. So, uh, you know, if you need multiple sizes of something, you can even get multiple sizes. Well, that's like a good question. Can... We didn't have that on our list. If we're if we have a big, if we're in a big open room, like your house is very open from one mm -hmm. room to the other, do our rugs need to be the same style, the same pattern, the same color, you know, the same version of a rug? No, they don't. But here's how I kind of look at that. Uh, size is just, let's talk about size mm -hmm. and that too, walking off of things. So if you have an open floor plan, which most every home today built on an open floor plan, and you can see different, you see rugs from every, every Right. Every door you come in, you can see different rugs in the house. But remember, a rug is on a uh, horizontal plane. So you're not always viewing it straight up and down. You can't always look at it and see it. So you're when you're shopping for it, you're looking at it, you're looking at it vertical. Sure. You're never going to see it like that again. It's going to be a tone when it's laid down on the floor. So if you're thinking in those terms, uh, you could never find a rug. <laughs> if you had to have 10 of them that matched, yeah. you know, in all your different areas, you could never really find that perfect fit. So whenever I have a rug that lays side by side of another rug and they are going to walk off of each other and I could see them clearly room to room, I always make sure that they tonally look well together. In other words, do they have similar colors do they have similar something about the rugs do they look well together so you're talking like your entryway Dying, rug yes. into your sitting room yes i want to make sure that they are not like here's an orange one and over here is a hot pink one i don't want to do that you do like pink though. i do like pink but, <laughs> that would be that might work in my house uh but yeah you want to make sure that they lay well together where you're walking off of them but if there is some separation room to room like here there's what 15 feet before you see this mm -hmm. one but a good buffer is to say, all right, foyer is, um, I like to have the foyer rug of my house state the color palette in the house. Meaning if I've used red, greens, blues, neutrals, and those type of things in my house, I want that rug in my entry 
to pull all those colors in there. I want it to tell my visitor, here's a color cue of what's within. And look down because every one of those colors are going to be really like the preview. It is. It's <laughs> the preview. Now, you walk on into the house. I use probably a simple neutral that's viewable from the foyer end. So that's why I have this neutral textured seagrass rug because it's not a pattern. And it's a buffer between other rugs. I've got another rug over here in this dining room. Happened to be one I drug from another house. So it's not really one I bought for here, but it works. It's more of an Asian rug, just a little bit. Got uh, soft muted greens and creams and so on. Still works. And then I have a needlepoint rug that's whites and cr uh, creams and grays off to the right of it. So it's within walking distance. Those colors are present in this rug in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice uh, soft palette, even though every single rug is different. Nothing so you've jumps. got different textures, yes, complementing colors, but not necessarily the same, mm -hmm. and not necessarily even the same style. Nope, not at all. The yeah. loudest rug in the room is the foyer. Mm -hmm. It is busy. It's florals. Yes. I actually had another rug in there that was a little bit more of a traditional um, Persian-looking rug, and the cats had a moment and uh, <laughs> ruined, my rug. <laughs> ruined my rug. I won't even tell that story, but they ruined the rug. I had to replace it, and I love this new rug. It doesn't walk off of that red rug as well as I thought it would, but anyway, uh, it does okay. It, it, it is my favorite. If I had to pick between the other one and the other room, I'd toss the other one, <laughs> but uh, I have an unusual living room that's off of this foyer, and it was kind of a challenge to find something both that looked well um, replace the other rug mm -hmm. anyway uh, needless to say i hope you all check it out and uh, we'll be doing some other decorating and design We've got tips some great topics and uh, yes we do we have some really good topics so thank you all for leaving us reviews and you got another one we didn't talk about sizing oh sizing yes let's do that very important very important it and can throw the entire scale of a room off. it can it certainly can so he has always the question i think people ask is do, does my sofa need to go on the rug or off the rug uh, does it need to all, all the furniture need to set up on the rug? If you have a big enough room, I will tell you this. It's better to just set the front legs of your sofa or at least halfway up onto the rug and to set everything up on the rug and make it like a little postage stamp and everything's just sitting up on the rug. Um, that makes it look awkward to me. Uh, and the reverse of that is to have nice big open space and have a tiny little rug in the middle floating around there like an island. You don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, I would say this. If you have... You want to make your rooms feel larger by putting in a larger rug as a sound that probably sounds backwards to most of you. But if you put in a little rug, your room will feel small. And you again want to create that look of um, a large space by putting in a large piece or a large canvas for your furniture to sit against. It's an anchor for the room. It helps anchor the furniture if you're floating the furniture in the room, like this room behind us here. And I'm, I'm even in small rooms will float my furniture and I always anchor it around a rug. I put that rug as big as I can probably do it without being wall-to-wall -wall carpet. You want to uh, see a little bit of the floor. Yes, you want to see your pretty wood floors. You do. You don't want to hide them. But I put that rug as large as I can and then set my furniture halfway up on it. So for meaning, and sometimes I'll put a chair all the way up on there. Most of the time I don't. It uh, I pull it back and let part of the chair, maybe the ottoman set up on the rug, the chair itself, front two legs on, and then the ottoman. But I don't try to get everybody up on the rug. So I think that makes it again look like a, like your, a little postage stamp. You, you're trying to back it up and mm -hmm. make it breathe. So I know that's a hard one probably to convey. Well, and when you think about too, that people are going to be sitting on the sofa and sitting in the chair, you don't want everybody sitting on top of each that's other. That's right. And people even need a, a little bit of leg room. That's right. If you've got even, even a before nine COVID. by <laughs> right, even if you've got a nine by twelve, and you start sitting a sofa up on the rug, now all of a sudden that sofa's you know taking up a big part of the square right. footage of the rug. And then you put in a big coffee table and a chair, and there's no the rug's gone. That's you can't exactly. see it. Can't see the rug. You cannot see the rug. Another one that's always a question mark for people is a bedroom how do you put a rug in a bedroom if you have a small bedroom what size rug do you order and do you cram it under the bed and then there goes the rug it sticks out a foot on each side of the bed I do not here's what I do and I'll show you an example of that and I have one downstairs I have a small bedroom downstairs or it's not small just an average size bedroom it's maybe 12 by 14 and uh, the bed is against the long wall. It's a king size bed, eats up most of this room, but it's a concrete finish floor. Had to have a rug, just had to have a rug. <laughs> I found a beautiful needlepoint rug and uh, it was maybe a 
six by nine is as big as it was. Oh, it's um, for you. <laughs> maybe it might have been an eight by ten, but six by nine is what I'm going to guess that it is. And that rug would have totally disappeared. It wouldn't lay at the foot of the bed, not big enough. There wasn't enough room to lay it at the foot of the bed or to the side of the bed. Made no sense either because the everybody else parties were going to step off on nothing. So I put it um, when you walk into the room. I put it under the only the facing the bed, the right bed post. It's under only that bed post. And when that person gets out of the bed, they'll step off on the rug. The person coming in the door steps onto the rug. It's art in the room. It softens the look of the room. Person on the left side of the bed gets no rug. They're just out of luck. They're just out of luck. They just have to get up <laughs> on the wrong side and roll over the other side maybe. But uh, at least you see the rug and you see the beauty of the rug and the art of the rug there. And it made such a impact in that room. Uh, that room was very cold and sterile. And that made all the difference in the world. You haven't seen it yet. So no. I, have to I know a lot of times people will put that under the two foot boards and have it out in front of the out bed. Out front. If, you have the, if that bed was turned the other way against the long wall, it would have done that very mm -hmm. thing. But it wasn't. So right. you would think, well, that work is not going to work in that room. Mm -hmm. But it did work. And it works, like I said, just under the one foot post. So don't be afraid to try it in mm -hmm. multiple places. No. Don't no, be no. afraid to be no. unusual placement. There's no... No nope. hard, fast rules. There's no hard and fast rules. If yeah. it will work in that room, I, you know, I knew I was going to stick it in there one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> when I found it, I said, that's going in that room. They don't take returns gonna... on the eBay. No, they probably don't. I've never tried <laughs> to sell rugs, one that. It probably wouldn't be uh -uh. easy. Oh, I don't think you can t return anything on there. It's already been returned <laughs> once. They make you kind of see what's wrong with it. You accept that. And when you bid, it, it probably tells you. Here's It shows you a photo of everything that's damaged mm -hmm. on it. And you don't mind a little dirty streak on the back, which why in the world would anybody care? It's upside down anyway. If it saves me a uh, 50% or more. It's exactly right. Who cares? Plus free shipping and yeah. no sales. Well, I don't know about some sales tax anymore. If they're charging, they probably, probably have is. to yeah. charge sales tax. Anyway, they didn't used to, but <laughs> now they have to probably. Oh, I think, think that probably gets all of our questions. I think so. All yeah. right, guys. Yeah. Well, we will see you all on the next episode, and hopefully you'll be here to hear us on our um weekly episode yeah and if you want to see the one. visuals that go along with what we're talking about check us out on youtube at heirloom traditions paint we'll always show the podcast there as well with the visuals as much as we can all right guys thank you all for listening and we'll see you next time don't forget about leaving us a review you may be the next winner we'll see you then bye, bye.